Uh, welcome back, Harold. Uh, everybody here is Camilo from across the pond. He traveled a long, long, long way just to be able to tell us something about his, his baby project called Day. Hi, and uh, welcome. Today I'm going to introduce Bay and uh, talk a little about the textual approach to multi-main against the past. And you will see. But before I start, uh, I will introduce myself. My name is Camille Vita, and I'm from Medellin, across the pond, in Colombia, South America. I just recently graduated from the art program, and also recently I started studying my computer engineering. And this is my first, my first project. I'm very passionate about software libre, about contemporary art and graphic design. And also I've been using junior limits since I was in high school and I'm really happy now to give back to the community. So Bay is a music player and I'm going to talk a little about the history and what I started making it. Because uh, you will say there are a lot of music players and uh, why would anyone make another one? And the first reason I started making Bay was because I didn't like the music players, they were available. They didn't appeal to me. What I wanted, what I wanted in a music player was and just to have a simple playlist because I usually don't have a lot of files. I just like to discover new music. So I'm constantly on YouTube listening to new music and what I like and I download it by using YouTube here. So at the beginning, I just wanted to create Bay. Uh, at the beginning, it was a GTK 3 app. And I created it because I, as I say, I didn't uh, knew any other music player that was like what I was looking for. It was just like a simple playlist. And then, as I was downloading and boring my music, then I realized that Bay will have to manage the music and also in some way to let me manage the discoveries so I could keep on discovering new music. So the three very important keys uh, and that I always have in mind with Bay was to manage, but most important to discover music and to have a simple design that allow me to manage and discover. So right now, Bay is a regular music collection player, like any other, but it aims to incorporate a contextual way for managing the user, user, uh, the user's music collection. Uh, this by adding the user to easily collect music information and the favorite music from online free streaming services. With this in mind, with the street events in mind, I start uh, moving the bed from GTK3 to Cube. So I want a simple and tiny place to keep a favorite music. And then once everyone was saying like, yeah, another music player, why people keep on making music players, why they just don't collaborate. And my simple answer was because I was learning, and it was yes, it was simple, but it would allow me to work on a project that was that I felt passionate about. And there were another two very important items for me why I wanted to make Bay, and the reason is because the music is emerging and contextually sensitive. Most music players are very static, like they will let you manage their collection and they might do it very well. But they are in all those programs, as I will explain later. Uh, to me, they lack some sort of 
intelligence by because they are not aware of the content and the content is not aware of itself besides the simple metadata information they might have. They don't know really what, for example, in a music player what really the song is about and they, if they don't know what the music is about then it's very hard for them to make suggestions or, or for you to make uh, searches that go beyond the simple metadata. Another point was that, as I said, most music players are static collection managers and too many times they are too generic. Uh, by that I mean the, they lack integration with the system. So if you use one in GDP or Genome and you use it uh, then in Plasma, then there are features that are missing. So I wanted to make a music player for KDE specifically and using all the KDE technologies that I could take advantage of. And, and that was another goal. So when you mean that the content is not aware of itself or the application is not aware of the content, and expose the for example, in music, in music players, is you cannot make queries like um, give me happy music or list artists that are of sound like Frank Ocean or music that specifically is like this song hit heavy pop from a leaf or give me music that I can use to work out or what is the new hot music. These type of queries are possible when the application of multimedia desktop apps are aware of the content and the content is aware of itself and also contextually one content, the content knows around the for example one music file knows about the other music and by the moment uh, Bay lets you discover this was the strategy I was using I was discovering the music via YouTube and then I created this little extension that connects to Bay and then I can add the that music that I like to the collection. In that way uh, I was able to keep discovering the music. Uh, right now uh, in the state of Bay, uh, it lets you browse your music to one through a number of music, including uh, the regular music collection player, like by album, by artist. You can also make uh, filter the music, but in the regular way, like filter by artist, by genre, by location, location, by the name of the place in which it does, the song is. But the goal is to generate. generate this type um, of queries and the results, not only locally, but by crawling the internet and the streaming services. Uh, this is the current design of Bay, uh, and it works as a playlist. Also, you can mark your songs by something I call moods that in the future will be, uh, be analyzed and automatically tagged by parsing the music lyrics or the sound waves and then automatically tag. And right now I'm going to show you some other screenshots from Bay and I'll talk to you a little bit about the features here that we have. Right now, he uses the internet to learn about the, the music. Here you see, uh, in part, like uh, most music players, he gets the lyrics and video from the artist, all the information. And also gets similar artists and tags that are related to the sound. This stuff works as links inside the library and outside. For example, if you listen to the song, you 
If we want that, you will first draw your with the delivery and the ordinary suggestions. And this is an example, and I call it the rabbit view because it's like you start from one point and then you can easily start discovering new music. They are very, uh, most likely similar to the songs you you really like. Uh, this is the album's view. And the artist's view. So, the problem I found in most of the music players that I was using is what I call a semantic gap. Because uh, those, are, uh, those music players rely on the metadata of the file. So they lack levels of, this, levels of description. Because most of the attributes from the metadata, far from contextual and relational, are often grouped as descriptive, a structural and a ministry. They have information about the preservation, rise, compression, and other technical information. But they lack uh, relational and contextual information. So what do I mean by contextual? I mean trying to find relationships between your music collection. How would your music about love from the 17th relate to music about love and from generic hip hop or R&B? How that relationship will work to make suggestions? Also contextual because it aims to gain extra information about your music. For example, uh, what, is, what is the meaning of the lyrics? What is the song talking about? And also about sound waves by making frequency uh, analysis. Also, this will let you expand the static metadata information to process with online information. So the goal is to let the content learn from the internet. And this is done with, with MDA, that stands for music, uh, sorry, by multimedia. Uh, I forgot it. But this can be applied also to music, to movies, to videos, to books, to games, to images, and to text documents. For example, by to images, you can get information of the images, like mm, where the photo was taken, and then that information can cross with information found on the, uh, on the internet, and that way the content will be more aware. And another example is for documents. Uh, it can make a parsing of the document and understand what the document is about. And then when you're making searches, uh, it'll, it wouldn't have to be specifically about uh, by the name of the document or the place of the document, but more like uh, if you're wearing a document about whatever subject, if you enter in the search, something related to that subject, and it will appear in the document. Uh, by that, I, th I think it will let you rediscover your own content, and have a smart local content, and have and the content be awareness. So that, but let me introduce the lessons learned from the internet. So some of the techniques I've been using to do so is making use of the music information retrieval with multimedia data mining, crowdlets, data mining, automatics, natural language processing, and sentimental analysis. 
So the first step from tech, uh, I've been taking with Bay is to create an ontology that describes the music lyrics. Uh, right now there are a lot of ontologies on the internet and I was making use of the music ontology but the class that describes the lyrics was very... was well, it, it exists but it was just a... a it triggered a just a chunk of text. What I'm using uh, to describe the music I'm describing its structure into intro, chorus, verse, and by using natural language processing, I've been finding those stru that structure by saying, let's say, a song is about a car, or it's about love, but it's about a girl, and the frequency. So this way, the intro has a meaning, and the meaning has text, it has a frequency and there are transitions between intro and chorus for example, in between the intro and the chorus uh, it's about love but between the hook and the bridge it's about cars so the way I'm figuring out um, what the lyrics are about and I'm sending this to an XML file that later can be parsed to make to give results to queries. Uh, all of this I'm making a new project that will expand the knowledge to music but to many other kind of files like documents, images, videos and the project is called Pulpo and it's on GitHub, there's the URL where you can check it out and what this project aims to be is kind of like a web app where you will ask or request for or you will give it a song name uh, or some feedback and I will give you the results that are similar to the, to the track, to the image, uh, etc. Uh, if you have any questions, you can you can make them or I don't know, just say whatever. Because this is my first time doing presentations, so I'm a little bit new to this. Okay, some of the challenges I'm facing right now with the project is to define privacy. What are the limits of privacy? Uh, how to collect the information of the user? If you want uh, the parsing and the analyzing is going to be locally or not? Also, another thing is the if I'm making annotations on the file itself or just using a database with all the if extra information I will get from parsing the files mm. and that goes send the another point like the static metadata versus semantic metadata uh, if, the thing is if I'm going to add somehow the information that I become able to extract from one file document music if that information is going to be only on a database that the application is going to use or that information can also somehow be written down on the file itself. And that's the same problem with the distribution of the information generated. And that's it. You can find and you can try the application right now in some place that QD.org. And 
the repository is in public Cater, and I uh, have my profile on GitHub where you can find the project uh, promo that hopefully will soon be able to know generate suggestions for music but also to images and videos. Have you made a release yet? And if not, when will you? Uh, no, I haven't made a release yet, but um, it's pretty stable right now, and the call is available. Uh, when will I make a release? I'm in the process of rewriting the database structure, and once that and once that gets done, I'm gonna make a release. Oh, um, there, I've seen many overlaps with what MetaBrains is doing with uh, several projects that could be uh, seen in the keynote. Uh, have you collaborated with them, and are I going to talk to them? Uh, can you repeat the name of the project? MetaBrains, so the, the people behind Music Brains. I don't know if you have uh, heard the keynote. Yes, morning. yes. Okay. Um, no, really, I haven't talked to them. I've been using the API and to extract information, but I haven't talked to them. But that would be very interesting if I could work with them. Yeah, I mean, Robert is here, so yes. I should talk to him. <laughs> More questions? Introduction to Rob. Lots of us can do that. I can do that. Can you show it? The application? What? Can you show the application? You can. Mm -hmm. Let me. Uh, yeah. 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 Demo. Some kind of demo of the application. Ah, uh, two. This is the main interface. Uh, most of the music you see here was uh, I collected from the two. I'm going to show you also that.
He tries to figure out who is, who, what's the title of this track and who is the artist. So I just collect it. There it is. It will be added to the local collection. And let's say. Here pass uh, a, a little time cover that goes through music services to look up for information. And uh, here you can find related tracks. And the idea is to have in the search bar the, the custom queries. This is the what we call the value view. And here is the, the right now it's just music. Ah, uh, here it downloaded the the chart I just collect from the engine. For example, the listen to the song, I uh, discover this new artist song. And the idea is to know we have uh, well, right now it's work in progress and using the um, and using a branch on the repository. That instead of going to YouTube, it extracts information from YouTube and it's just and it, it is listed here and you can collect it from the interface itself. So that way it will be generating suggestions. Thank you. 